Hello you lovely cups, it's the Dragon Lord here back again with another part of What If Luffy Went Back in Time Part 5. Now if you haven't already, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And also, join the Discord and the Roblox group. Both links are at the top of the description and we would love to see you there. Anyway, with that further ado, let's get into it. Nami had estimated that it would take two to three weeks to get to Loketown, which wasn't really a problem, they'd just have to make a few stops along the way to gather up supplies. This did mean one dreadful thing to the crew, more training with Luffy, which wasn't really an issue. The crew liked the improvement, but it was hell. Not really, but at least it felt to it like them. But they knew that if they had to go to the Grand Line, they had to get stronger. A lot stronger. The only people who really didn't complain were Sanji and Zoro. They actually seemed to be on board with it, with Usopp being the man in the middle. Nami just didn't want to go through the hellish training. Before they actually started to train, Zoro pointed out his sword problem. Which, after thinking about it, Luffy said that they would get him new swords at Loketown. When asked specifically why at Loketown, Luffy made a clear point about it. It was one of those smart moments that nobody really thought of, but it was really just his prior knowledge. He said something about swords being discarded there, and that there were probably a lot of shops that sold pretty good swords for a low price. Nami actually agreed to this, saying that it that Loketown is the last stop before the Grand Line, and that it made the most sense that people dropped off their unnecessary supplies there, including weaponry that they stole from other pirates. Which ended up as good news to Zoro. He sincerely asked for some money so that he could go buy swords, and that brought Nami to finally remember what her thing was that she was gonna do. As a thank you, she decided to give everybody in the crew a hundred thousand. Barry. It was a thank you for helping her village. Now their overall wealth was somewhere over 50 million Barry, but a hundred thousand for basically doing nothing wasn't something small. So they all thanked her. A few people just gave the money back, saying that she should manage it, one being Luffy, the other being Sanji, as they were already planning on going shopping together for supplies, that task was left to them. As Usopp was now focused more on his gadgets, he didn't really have time to buy supplies for the ship, but he made a general list of what they needed so Sanji and Nami could do the job instead. Anyway, their three weeks of training started. This time, they all trained with Luffy and with each other. This was once again to further their battle experience. If they fought with each other, there was more chance of them learning and growing. Zoro especially grew astronomically in this time. He had fully recovered from his wounds that he received from Mihawk, and now he could just fully focus on training. He didn't have to limit himself as he overworked himself quite a lot, but it was the fastest way for him to learn. Using his Wado Ichimonji, which was his only sword at the moment, he would rush at Luffy, striking at Luffy, but well, Luffy would simply dodge. His speed and power were on another level. Zoro had trained a lot in his childhood, but it really made him think what hell Luffy had gone through to attain this much strength, which wasn't really the case. Luffy just grew up in an environment where he constantly fought, and well now he also trained himself in ways that were beyond anybody's expectations, pushing his body to the limit almost every day in the 10 years that he had gotten. 
The fact that he could use gear 2nd and gear 3rd to also further increase his power was a complete scam. It put a strain on his body, but if he used it to train, then he could gain strength faster. There was also the factor that Ace, his older brother, was also there, and Ace was a prodigy compared to Luffy, so in that sense, when they fought each other, Luffy learned a lot, even from a young Ace. Their training continues for three weeks. There isn't much change, just them attacking the metal straw men that they had, and also just training with Luffy in general, with Usopp more or less focusing on gadgets as well. Along the line, he ends up upgrading Nami's staff a bit. Not a lot, but he just made it more durable and a better attacking weapon. The crew grew a lot, but it wasn't a significant change. The only person who really changed was Zoro, as he was no longer limited by the wound he had. He could now fully exert himself when training, which was the most effective method for him. After their three weeks of training whilst traveling, they arrive at Loketown. It's quite a surprise to everyone, as they all knew that this was the place where Gold D. Roger, the King of the Pirates, was executed. Now, Everybody had their own goals and things to do. Nami and Sanji both set off to go shopping for supplies and getting food as well. Usopp went off with his 100,000 that he also got from Nami to buy better equipment, tools, and materials so that he could make more gadgets and whatnot. Meanwhile, Luffy and Zoro were sightseeing together until Zoro got lost. Zoro kept walking, trying to find his way back to Luffy, and then he accidentally bumps into a girl. She drops her glasses and he picks them up, trying to be friendly and give them back. Upon seeing her face, however, he breaks them. It wasn't intentional, it was more or less by accident, but he saw that she resembled his childhood friend a lot, which made him remember Kuina. She yells at him, because he broke her glasses and then yells at him more and tells him to pay up. Which he does, he hands her 10,000 berry. But after thinking about it for a moment, she hands it back, saying that she was just a bit angered and too caught up in the moment, and that he shouldn't pay for it as she can just get replacements quite easily. He's a bit confused on why she wouldn't accept the money, but after talking for a bit, she introduces herself as Toshigi, a marine, and after hearing that she's a marine, Zoro goes on his way. Meanwhile, Nami and Sanji are scouring the markets. They pretty much had all the materials that they would need in case if the f ship broke, and they also had all the materials needed for most cooking recipes that Sanji knew. Yet he found something. A blue-finned elephant tuna. It was quite a rare fish that couldn't be found in the East Blue. He confronted the shop owner, and while well, the shop owner said that it could be a fish that traveled through the All Blue to get into the East Blue, which was quite surprising to hear. He offers a large sum of money for the fish, the entire 100,000 that he had gotten from Nami, yet the Fishman tells him that the fish has already been put up for auction on whoever wins the cooking competition that will be held. Sanji enters with a fire in his eyes, and, well, Nami, who actually wants to try the fish, supports him from the sidelines. She watches as he beats competitor after competitor, until this woman approaches. She's a woman that Sanji apparently knew, though he had forgotten, and she challenges him in the finals. They start their cook-off, and Nami then cheers for Sanji, which really puts a fire in his heart, as he makes the perfect dish that the judges like. With that, he takes his leave together with the blue finned elephant Tuna and Nami, though they get confronted by the woman who lost, who said that she would one day beat Sanji at cooking though he just ignored it as he continued on his way. Normally, he would be head over heels for a woman that was as beautiful as she was, but, well, being with Nami and training with her, being that close to her, he couldn't be a perv in front of her, so he decided to just try and ignore it. 
They move out as they go back to the ship to store their supplies. After that, they had said that they would meet up with the rest of the crew at the plaza to go see the executioner platform. So they made their way. Meanwhile, Usopp was going from store to store. He bought these little bombs and other little things, gunpowder and whatnot, for gadgets he would make in the future. He had some crazy ideas, and he had quite a lot of money to spend on it as well. He ended up finding these goggles. Now, these goggles were quite exceptional. They were sniper goggles that he really needed if he wanted to step up his game. So he bought them. Luckily, he had enough money to buy them, he even had more than he needed, so he bought them without problem, though this little girl approached him and kicked him on the shin, which made him yell out for a second. He asked her why she did that, and then she just says that he's a meanie because she wanted to buy those glasses for her dad as a gift. He just says that she should have been quicker, and at that moment she starts to whine really loudly. At that moment, another voice could be heard, a bit of a deeper voice who tells her to stop, as she's inconveniencing this man. It's the bounty hunter who goes by the name Daddy. He apologizes to Usopp, however, after realizing who Usopp is, the son of Yasop, he asks him if they could have a little scuffle to check their skills. After all, he had lost to Yasop way long before. So they have a little competition on whether or not Usopp can hit the crown, which Usopp actually performs way better than he did. And he hit the little ball in the crown, really surprising the bounty hunter, who then says that Usopp won a fair game as he leaves together with his daughter. Meanwhile, on the other side of Loke Town, Zoro is in a sword shop. He's looking through swords after he had confronted the shop owner on where he could find some good swords. With his budget, the shop owner pointed him at the 50k barrels, which had a lot of swords that were worth 50k. At that moment, Toshigi walked into the store. Zoro got a bit surprised by her, but she didn't instantly recognize him. She just thought he was the guy from before which then she got her sword back from the shop owner who had polished it up. She then recognizes Zoro as the guy she bumped into before, as she saw the hazy green hair of his and now she, re she recalled that hair. She walked up to him and asked him what he was doing as he said that he was looking for swords. She helped him out and eventually Zoro grabbed hold of a sword. He felt something from this sword. He pulled it out and instantly Toshigi recognized it as she started going through pages in her book. The sword he was holding was Sandai Kitetsu, a great sword. The shop owner, however, says that he couldn't sell it to him, and then Toshigi remarked that that was obvious as this blade was at least worth a few million berry instead of 50,000 berry. The shop owner, however, confronts her saying that that's not the reason why. At that moment, Zoro interrupts as he says that the sword is cursed. The shop owner asks him how he knows it, and Zoro says that he can feel it, as he swings the sword around a bit, worrying the shop owner who, sells, who tells him to cut it out. However, Zoro then displays his immense skill with the sword, even surprising Toshigi. She knows that he isn't just a beginner, he's someone who has faced opponents far stronger than she has. From a few simple movements she could tell this, this was simply because of his training with Luffy. He was already a great swordsman before he met Luffy, but after he met Luffy he had immensely grown, because he just fought someone who was on Mihawk's level constantly. The rest of the crew was even a bit jealous because out of everyone, Zoro was the one Luffy sparred the most with, as he was the strongest and was the most competitive. The shop owner still says that Immense skill cannot control the blade. Then Zoro says that his luck will beat it, as he throws up the blade and extends his arm. However, the sword just passes by his arm without even touching it, as it wedges itself completely into the ground. Zoro grabs the sword out of the ground and cheats it, saying that he'll buy it for the 50k. The shop owner agrees and then tells him to wait. He pulls out a sword, which had a nice black licorice paint on it with a square guard. The shop owner called it the best sword in his entire shop, as it was a skillful great sword. 
He calls the sword Yubashiri and says that he will give it to Zoro for free because Zoro is such an amazing swordsman with such good luck and it's been a while since he's seen that swordsmanship spirit so he wants Zoro to have it and to make a name with the sword. Zoro graciously accepts and pays the 50k for Sandaiki Tetsu and adds Yubashiri and the other one to his belt. At that moment Tishigi recognizes the sword that Zoro is carrying as the Wado Ichimonji. He leaves before she can confront him about it though. After he left, she thought about it some more and then remembered that the Wado Ichimonji was currently in the possession of a bounty hunter called Rowanoa Zoro, but who had turned to become a pirate under Monkey D. Luffy who currently had a 170 million berry bounty. She got furious that she let someone like that escape and tried to chase after him, though she couldn't find him. Meanwhile, Luffy's at the plaza as he's looking around. He finds the execution platform and remembers that he saw the wide sky when he stood on it, so he wanted to see that again, so he launched himself back up there. He stood on top of the platform and looked around. He admired the view. This was the view that Goldie Roger saw before he died. He wondered how it would feel if he died in this way, instead of being killed by falling into the water whilst he fought Kaido. It was quite sad. In his sadness, he got jumped by Buggy and some of his men, together with Alvida who was now thin because of the Smooth Smooth's fruit. He hadn't realized it, but Buggy and the Alvida pirates and all of them were chasing after Luffy to try and find him, and capture him and finish him off. They were quite mad at him for dealing with them so easily. He captures Luffy and then declares that this will be the day that Monkey D. Luffy dies and that it will be his execution. Meanwhile, Zoro and Sanji get to the plaza and a certain captain gets informed of Luffy's presence on the island as he sets out to try and chase him. Zoro and Sanji who are there are quite agitated that their captain got taken by someone so weak as they rush out to try and help. They easily beat Buggy's pirates and the rest of Alvida's pirates though Sanji falls victim to Alvida's beauty. So she gets beaten down by Nami who joined in pretty late. She tells them to focus and to go help Luffy as she will take care of the small fries. Though she took on more than she bargained for, but she still held on. After a while, the marines also approach as they help out Nami in beating the small fry pirates. Right before Zoro or Sanji can get to Luffy though, lightning strikes the platform right as Buggy was about to hit Luffy's neck with the sword. From the debris, Luffy gets out unscathed though, as he knew what had happened. Someone had intervened. It was his father, Dragon. Luffy didn't say anything as he just went on his way. A certain captain had arrived right as the lightning struck and saw what had happened. It was Smoker, the captain of the marines that had been chasing pirates for a long time. He had to get Luffy here, or it would be a disgrace for him. After all, Luffy had a bounty of 170 million. He just couldn't let that pass up. It was a pirate that was too much of a threat and who was not allowed to get to the Grand Line. However, the crew quickly starts running with Sanji carrying Nami and Zoro following behind together with Luffy. Smoker and Tashigi start chasing them. Smoker then attacks Luffy as they start flying away, with Tashigi and Zoro getting in a kind of standoff. She draws her sword and so does Zoro. She gets angered, however, when he doesn't draw his other swords and only draws the Wado Ichimonji, and asks her why he's being so unequal to her just because she's a woman. Zoro doesn't say anything on this and just says that she reminds him of her friend, though she is too weak to be her old friend. This kind of angers Tashigi as she rushes at Zoro. However, he simply deflects the attack and then almost stabs her, but instead of doing that, he knocks her out with the hilt of his blade. He took quick care of her as to not harm her too much, but then he looked over to his left, where Smoker and Luffy were having their battle. Smoker was basically trying to grab Luffy, who easily dodged most of his attempts, 
and then he tried to punch Luffy or stab him with, with the weapon he was carrying on his back. Yet Luffy easily dodged all of the attacks and then sent back one of his own, a gear second armament hockey punch. In one punch, Smoker coughed up blood. This was insane. Was this the difference between him and a pirate with a 170 million berry bounty? It can't be. He had already captured pirates that had a higher bounty than that. So why was Luffy different? It didn't make sense. He was getting desperate. He sent out more and more attacks, as he sent out more smoke fists. At the same time, Luffy decided to end the fight. He had gotten out of gear second and then used an armament gatling, which easily knocked out Smoker, who was badly wounded. Once again, Zoro admired his captain's strength. There, Usopp finds them and then joins up with them, as they all get onto the ship and leave Loketown. Next destination, Grand Line. They're all having a chat as the storm keeps brewing, and they're laughing about their getaway. Then they all make vows before entering the Grand Line. They vow that each one of them will achieve their dreams, and Luffy is happy once more. The Grand Line was where he was going to change the regrets he had in his past, and also have a lot of fun. But that will be for the next part of What If Luffy Went Back in Time. I hope you lovely cubs enjoyed today's part. If you did, then consider liking and subscribing. It shows me that you guys care. If you haven't already, you can also join the Discord and the Roblox group. They're the top two links in the description, and we would love to see you there. And without further ado, my name's the Dragon Lord, and I am signing out.